Have you ever wondered why your aquarium plants just won't grow? No matter how much light or fertilizer you provide, the answer might surprise you. It turns out there's a secret ingredient that can make or break your plant growth, and it's not what you think. This right here might be the reason why your plants aren't growing. The secret to unlocking your plant's true potential might be your water parameters. Yeah, that's right. The water you use to fill your tank could be the culprit holding back your plant's growth. There are four factors that can influence how well plants can grow. pH, GH, KH, and one more little secret that I'll reveal at the end. But let's start talking about pH. pH measures how acidic or basic a solution is. And it's based on the concentration of hydrogen ions in the solution. In general, a good pH range for most aquatic plants is between 6.5 and 6.8. If the pH is too high or too low, it can limit the availability of certain nutrients that plants need to grow, such as iron and manganese. Additionally, pH pH levels can affect the concentration of dissolved CO2 in the water, with low pH water having a higher concentration of dissolved CO2. This is one of the reasons why aqua soil and soil in general lowers pH to around 6.5. It's to create a favorable environment for plant growth. Now, I'm not saying that you need 6.5 pH to grow plants. This tank had an 8.2 pH, and it still was able to grow plants. Moving on to GH. GH, or general hardness, refers to the concentration of dissolved calcium and magnesium in the water. These minerals are essential for building cell walls and supporting other biological processes in plants. However, GH should not be used as a direct test for calcium and magnesium. You can have high amounts of calcium and low magnesium and still get a high GH reading, which is why GH is not too important, but it is something to consider due to livestock. Although, it's not the most critical water parameter, unlike this next one. KH, or carbonate hardness, is what really matters between the two. KH measures the carbonate and bicarbonate ions in the water and plays a significant role in maintaining pH levels. As I mentioned earlier, pH is essential for aquatic plant growth, and pH fluctuations can stress the plants. Therefore, the ideal KH levels for plants falls between 3 to 8 dKH. Going any lower can result in wild pH swings, while higher levels can lead to difficulties in controlling the pH, thus potentially harming fish and plants. Factors that can affect KH include substrates such as aqua soil and aragonites, and hardscape like limestone-based rocks and driftwood. This was the main reason why I couldn't grow Rotala Waliki in my fluval flex. Tropica also states that this plant prefers softer water. Therefore, it's essential to research plants and test your local water to create the best environment. To learn more about testing GH and KH and why it's important, check out my other video on the subject. Now, here is that little secret I was talking about earlier. It has nothing to do with water parameters, but with water flow. Water flow plays a crucial role in plant growth. In fact, a study on Eponogeton and Longidus found that this plant had the strongest effect on growth, morphology, and composition under these conditions. Moreover, flow helps prevent algae from growing on plants and is one way to combat them. This is why this plant thrives in creeks and river systems with permanently flowing water. However, it's important to keep in mind that water flow can also lead to surface agitation, which can in turn result in a loss of CO2, a crucial factor in maintaining healthy plant growth. If you're interested in learning more more about how surface agitation affects CO2 levels, I recommend checking out this video. 